Well, let's talk about it. The Kaiser Odin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. It's big, but it's not fat. It makes sense. The design is great and clean. Very usable. Very sensible. But it's symmetrical. Got carbon fiber front and back. Front and back. I'm riding that pony to hell, I'll tell you that. I'm just tired of party in the front, all work in the back. Backside needs some party too. And there you go. Hardened steel insert. We're going to take it apart because we should, because we must. And it comes in this box from Kaiser. Slip cover on the outside. Bingo. This is uh, like a magnetic shut. And because passion, pride, performance and moving the camera stand all at one time packaging uh this is warranty information use, information usage care their website that kind of thing nothing specific to the knife except on the end here odin ivan bragness my buddy um he lives in ukraine he did the real steel havron Real Steel Relic, and of course, the Odin, and of course, the CX, which is a Kaiser, but this is also Ivan. This is crazy. This is a prototype. This knife will be out sometime mid-2020. It's just like waiting for paint to dry on a garage. It just makes you kind of frustrated because... This you'd really want this to be out. I I do, but it's not, and God only knows when. But I'm glad I got the prototype in my hand. Thank you, Ivan. Appreciate that, buddy. So crazy pocket clip. Hey, hey, what's going on? When am I gonna get released? God only knows, buddy. But I've got this until then, and this the Odin I really like. Uh, it makes sense in so many ways. No, the pocket clip's are not up here. No, you run your lanyard through there. There's the pocket clip. So they they put design cues all through here, here, machining, and, you know, like I said, inlay on front and the back. And this carbon fiber is not glossy, smooth, whatever. It's got a lot of traction on it. So that's a good thing, right? So you can get your hand on this thing. And ergos are really good. Like the ergos. Front choil, here you go. And you got plenty of room, even on big hands, to get a hold of this knife. Reverse grip. How's that working for you? Oh yeah, all day long. But it's not small. It's not small. Got to throw the mini Doman for some damn reason in here because it's a mini knife. I don't have any other mini knives in here. Hold on. That's a 7-inch. Hold on. Let's, let's throw my Shockwave in there. Shockwave is a small knife. Okay. Or how about my Vortex? Yeah, they're both small knives. Let's do this. Do you hear that swack? Riot Jack will give it a swack. And the Riot Jack does win, doesn't it? Whew. This baby is so big, it just dares you to try and carry it because it's, it's a chore. That's a big old knife right there, my friends. And the Freak, Benchmade. Eh, freak ain't quite measuring up. Okay, made my point. Let's put a measure on it. You saw the... You saw the stats on the side of the box, right? But I'm saying, what am I saying? 4.1, 4.2 inch blade? Oh yeah, well if you want to bring it back to the most forward point of the bolster, yeah, then it's 4 inches, 100 milligram, millimeter type. Not 9 inches, but getting close, within an eighth. 22 and a half centimeters. That's a good size knife. What did they say on the box, by the way? They say 4 inch blade? They they almost bent. They almost bent over to the complete four inch there. 3.97. Couldn't quite bring themselves to it. But I'm going to bring them to it because, yeah, that's a four inch blade. Little choil in there for sharpening. S30 
uh, 5VN, so CPMS 35VN blade. Uh, there's your model number, as you saw on the end of the box as well. And this is stone washed. Okay, this ain't made to be a, a little pretty. This is made to be carried and used. And you know what? Actually, this is this like a $285 knife, $320 knife? Hell no. It's $189. Bucks. And then LTK discount code takes 10% off. I mean, look. SRP is 200 cents. No, 189. So 190, knock about 20 off there for the temperature, about 172. You think you can live with that? I think that's pretty damn reasonable, actually. Yeah, he's saying nine inches overall. Damn right. Okay, so yeah. And of course, we're going to disassemble it. Maybe finger flick, of course. So you can. Use the flipper tab. There's jimping on top of that blade. So you got a kind of a ramp. Not really much of a of a ramp there, but a little bit of. And the jimping is reasonable, not dangerous. Okay? So you get traction there. Like I said, ergos are good all the way around. And your lanyard goes through there. At least you have a backspacer. Kind of carries a little bit of that traction thing from here. You see how they kind of mill down the middle of there. Kind of like the back of a, what, alligator or crocodile or something. And then this. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's a, a good looking design. When I saw this in 20... God, I think they even had this to show sometime in 2018. That's how long this took to get out. A uh, year and a half at least from the time I first saw it. So, very glad it finally showed up. Will the knife be a knife? Let's find out. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this one seems to be particularly sharp, actually. So, that's good. Hey, got a little cutaway up here where your finger can land after you flip it open. Okay, but yeah, you can kick it out. It's not that difficult. I'd call it maybe a 4.5 on my D10 scale, somewhere like that. So, but you know, with that being said, you want you want to be able to finger flick it. So. You want it to be able to not be too stiff of a detent for that. Is it decent? Yeah, a lazy flip will get it open. Uh, can I fail it? I'm sure I can. Ooh, almost. Almost. Hold on. If I concentrate. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I can fail it. Okay. Come on. Push you out. Okay, yeah, I can do that. But I think this is appropriate detent. For this knife swinging gate not snappy but it gives me enough um enough softness on the detent to do finger flick opening and i'm sure that's what the cutaway is for so you could do that nice feels good in hand Four point six five ounces. That's not heavy for a nine inch knife. The a solid titanium. Um, One hundred thirty two grams. I mean, this is solid tie flipper. It's not like a whole G uh, carbon fiber scale up here. Although they've excavated a lot, you know, to put that in, etc. I get that, but still, that's reasonable, especially for a knife this big. I wonder if I need this. Yeah, I do, because it's over a half inch. So 13.5 millimeters on this. It's not uh, contoured. It's a flat because the inlays and all that kind of stuff. And what do we got here? That's 3.3 uh, millimeters, 0.13 inches on the blade stock. So not overly heavy, not like four millimeter blade stock or anything. That's reasonable. 
Like I said, lockup's pretty substantial at about 30% there. What do you think? Should we pull it apart? Let's do that. Let's see what the guts look like. And I'm sure we got number sixes and number eights all over the place here. So let's pull ourselves a number six to start out with to get these little puppies out of here. Not a problem with that one. How about this? Oh, baby, that just jumped out. Okay. Yeah, there was a little bit. There's some thread locker on there, right? Okay. Both of them look like the exact same uh, depth. Come a little wee haw driver with the bits in the, in the handle. And... Wow, I think this is actually the screw part, which is a little unusual, but oh well. We can live with that, and it comes apart pretty easy. Backspacer. Of course, they didn't weight relieve on the inside of there because they cut away so much in there to put the carbon fiber in. And here you go, and I pop that out. And so there's your steel washer. And, of course, your blade stop, which you can pull out. I'm going to leave it back in. And here's your bearings. They're ceramic. Right there in that disc. Blade. Come away from there. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay. And then we got a ceramic detent ball with hardened steel insert over travel stop. Here's our pivot, which is a solid thing, so it's not like a screw that comes into here and screws coming both sides. I like this solid kind of pivot thing with only one screw coming from one side. And there's my bearings and there's my washer. So that kind of gives you the total layout there. Uh, at least there's access on the front because they didn't make a D-shaped pivot or any kind of notches or anything that'll hold it together. Uh, so you got to be able to, in case you put too much Loctite, to stabilize this to break that away. So, okay, okay. If you got an opening and it's machined, so the pivot's not just too plain. Just to show you the steel washers that cradle the bearings here. So I just pulled that out on that one side to show you. There you go. If we want to reassemble this, then we can put the pivot from uh, I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it through backwards. Because the the screw was actually in the front and the tube was in the back. But I always like my screw to be in the back. That way I can disassemble everything from one side. And so I'm going to flip it around. And then, let me get my damn KPL out here. And in here too. Put my bearings back in here. And this is just a, you know, you could pull this backspacer off of here if you want. But I'm not going to because I don't feel the need to. I just wanted to pull these out, take a look. Blade. There we go. Bearings. There we go. And are we missing anything? We got our stop. We got our bag spacer. Looks like we got everything we need to stack this puppy back together. And it goes back together real easy. And we got our number eight here. Which I've got right here. 
Okay. Okay, there we go. And then we got these two little screws, and they're both the exact same size. And, of course, we didn't take the pocket clip off either. Sorry about that, but uh, I didn't see any particular reason to. Okay, tighten that one in. Not a problem. That's probably about all it needs. I can do some uh, thread locker later, but no point in doing that necessarily on camera. And here we go. Nice. Alrighty, I think we've got her put back together. Got her about, you know, the kind of action I like. Yeah, cool. Good looking knife, like it in the hand. There's I can't think of anything I don't like about this knife. Uh, I mean, the proper jimping and traction everywhere on this knife, including the flipper tab, not being too obtuse and not being long and big and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty minimal, far forward, pretty intuitive. Uh, place for the lanyard. I guess they could have put it through here and skip that. I mean, if you're too particular that I don't really care one way or the other that much about that and I do like the way they did the pocket clip and it goes in and out of my pocket fine so the action is nice the price is really reasonable in the 170 range delivered I really think that's that's good that's good Kaiser fit and finish is good I'll take it thank you so much for hanging out Exploring the Kaiser Odin. And you guys, you know what we do around here. We love them knives. So you stay sharp.